Right, I'm going to attempt to do a quick video on showing how to program the Yesu FT7900 uh, using the online software you can get. Um, I've done a quick video before uh, on the Yesu. Fantastic little radio. Um, I use mine for obviously talking on the normal uh, 2 and 70 bands. Um, I've got a lot of frequencies to listen to as well, uh, a lot of marine bands, uh, PMRs, everything you can pick up a hell of a lot on these things, uh, all the air bands as well. Um, there's a lot of features on the ESU which is um, not underestimated, I think, uh, not understood and to be honest quite difficult to use. You've um, got all the hyper memories which I have to admit I don't actually use. Um, I just keep all my memories in banks, in the actual banks you can have to scan. Uh, so once you set it up, you can just select from whichever bank you want. And I have all my channels in different banks in each one. So all the marine, air, uh, so on and so forth, and then all the uh, 270 bands. Got all the repeaters in another one, etc. etc. I just find that easier because even if you just want to scan the whole lot, you can just go to No Bank, select that, and that'll just scan through everything you've got. Oh. Um, but obviously, that can be a bit annoying if you only have to certain things. So, I think personally, it's much easier using using it this way um, and forgetting all the other hyper memories and everything, but that's my personal opinion, but um, I'll show how I've programmed mine up uh, this way to see if it's any easier for anyone. Right, so the software that I actually have um, you can get online quite easy, uh, FTB7900 version 1.03 um, I'll have to put in the notes, I can't remember the gentleman's name, uh, who comes up with this software. If you just type in uh, Yesu FT7900 uh, programming software, something like that, it brings it up anyway. He, he does um, the software for a lot of radios, a lot of Yesus, a lot of others as well. Um, so, as you can see, I have all my banks and all the memories just in a continuous list just like an excel list going down and obviously you've got the normal buttons at the top read radio so if I already had the radio programmed you just um, use it to read all the memories off the radio to this software and um, say if you just got the software and you already have your radio programmed up you can back it up that way and then once you start using the software you just write to radio and you save a file off this program with everything you've put in right so, first of all, you need the programming lead, which are uh, easy enough to get. I won't go into the actual you know, details of where exactly you get every cable from and this and the other. Well, you only need one for this. Um, I'll put some links in the description um, for that. But, as you might have been see my I've only got the front end of my radio over here. So I've got a cable bringing it over and the unit sat over here. Just a separation kit, easy enough to get. I actually made this lead because it wasn't long enough. And you can just make the leads up if you've got the, the gear to do so and just run it over there. Um, power supply down here, if I can show it under. Just have a little cable going into the back. Um, I haven't actually got the USB one, this is actually um, the old style cable. Um, but I just got a, a small header unit, header kit should I say, because uh, a lot of more modern PCs don't have the connection anymore and I um, just bought the uh, a small card that went in the back of the PC and then you just plug it on a USB header on the motherboard and it works just fine. Um, just a COM port connection, um, obviously you can get the USB like virtual COM ports and but um, doing data modes etc. I've had a lot of trouble 
uh, with certain drivers and different versions of Windows, it can be a pain. But uh, using it this way um, with the Comport has, has been has been fine for me. I have to admit. Um, if you go on your settings, you can see there when you open the Comport, it shows that I'm on Comport two. Um, there is a Comport detector, which when you open up, it'll automatically detect your port and showing there COM1 and 2 found. If you've got a lot more things, COM ports and that used, uh, which I have with some of the data modes where I've got my other year Sioux FT450 in, um, it, it has caused trouble before but uh, we won't get into that, you have to, you can switch and uh, reassign COM ports in the um, control panel etc but it's, that's getting a bit more complicated and it can be a pain. But if you're just using it as this, it's the only thing in the computer where uh, this PC is just used for my radios, uh, then it's fine. Right, I won't read from the radio because I don't need to, it's already it's already been done. This list is all I use for the radio, I don't put it in manually so I don't need to. Um, but as you can see, I have all mine. going down and it's, it's it's really simple the way you set it up because you can literally just type in the frequencies just like an Excel spreadsheet um, a lot of it's automatic you can put your repeater shifts in your offsets and then the uh, encoding method if it's got a CTCSS etc as there you just pick from a drop down box and select which one you need Obviously, they're uh, they're all the repeaters, and then you can put the name in there. So you can actually name the repeaters as I've done there, and it gives you the option of such there. You can have it by name or frequency, i.e., it'll show the frequency that you've put in for that repeater or the repeater name. To be honest, the repeater names obviously the easiest one to choose, so you can see what you're on. You can also select the power. Obviously, depending on what license you've got, etc., you can put in of the radio, low, medium, high, and then you can put the hyper memories in. As I say, I don't use them. I just don't find it. It's not being as easy as intuitive. I found the way I've got it set up much easier. Um, you can select to just look at the hyper memories, etc., etc. But if you leave it on this main view, um, if you actually skip across. You can see, put in a memory description, uh, sorry, and there's your hyper memory link, but as I say, I don't use that. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Click on the memory bank and both, and that brings up the actual banks I've stuck them in. As you can see, you've got all the banks across the top there. Uh, 20 banks, which I think's plenty, really. Um, and then you just literally tick and put an X, should I say, um, an actual physical X on the keyboard in the bank you want it to be in. So I've got all the repeater names there. And obviously you've just put an X in bank three. So all my repeaters are in. I'll look on here. Um, scan bank three. There's all the repeaters. So, and the same for all the two meter frequencies, I've put them in bank four, and you just go on. Got all the marine channels in bank one, and you literally just put X's in all the ones. So when you come to add a new frequency, um, you can literally just put in a uh, Way past, so you can have plenty of room. You can just put in another frequency there. Um, say you just stick in AM or FM, obviously, it's depending if you're listening to wave bands and such. Uh, your repeater offsets, CTCSS. Um, if you wanted to show the frequency on the display or the name, then you stick in the name. Uh, they transmit power, and then the hyper memories, as I say, I leave. Um, saying on this view, you can see it's got everything, and then you just you just click the banks that you want and in all honesty I think 20 banks is, is a 
plenty really when you can have a lot of channels in each bank and um, I've, I mean, I've got six banks at the moment and then obviously you've just got the um, when you select the no bank you can just scan everything if that's what you're after but obviously if you're looking to talk you just stick it on what you want and the way to uh, set it up is once you've got that cable plugged in um, as long as the com ports are showing in there hopefully it'll be the right one just press right to radio and it gives you the instructions on screen on here um, which is obviously very handy um, and as it says you just turn it off and then hold the mega priority button while holding your power button in and it comes into this menu and you select number seven which is clone then hold in the band button until it temporarily turns off and turns back on again it takes a second it does say on the screen that it should beep uh, mine doesn't but um, it hasn't made a difference um, and that's it set ready to go press ok yeah, and then it says you are now prepared, it says 7800, it didn't actually have a version for 7900 but they are the same radio and this works just fine um, this is there press and hold the low ACC button and it goes to RX which is correct and then press OK and it is showing RX as it says there Sorry if it's trouble focusing, it's not that light in this room. Um, I've got no new uh, frequencies I've stuck in on here, so all it'll do is just rewrite all of this. Um, it won't make any difference, but it's handy if you've got other people's radios, you can bring them around, plug it in, and just upload your file. Um, same because it's just like an Excel file, you just save this file. Um, and then you've got a backup of the radio anything happens to it and if you need to add any more you literally just stick a new one on the bottom and then stick what bank you want it in and then there you go when you turn on the radio you'll have um, another channel straight in the only trouble I've found not trouble is um, unlike Excel you can't just you know click on a cell and um, say if you wanted to add a new frequency in you know, the repeat is something up here um, you can't just click like add new cell or row should I say like you would in Excel to put a blank new row in and then you can enter it there you've got to enter it in at the bottom um, which can be annoying um, but obviously then you just tick the same bank as, uh, as you're after and uh, it'll be fine uh, transfer complete power off the radio then power on so it's gone back to clone let's turn it off turn it on there we go, and that's back to, to normal. Um, so we say you can have it on the no bank, scan through everything, and then when it flashes, that's showing that you don't have anything programmed in for those banks. Obviously, I've only got six, you've got seven, it flashes to show there's uh, nothing programmed into there yet. Let's see, got 20 banks, loads of room. So I've got a little PMR so I can listen to. Um, so and all the others. And that's pretty much it. Um, that just goes back as it was. You can just press save. Uh, once you've done the file and as you can see, I've um, just got the file saved in there. Um, and then if you ever need to upload anything else, you just select that file it populate this list um, you can save different files so you can have a file say for a certain person's particular radio if you're doing someone else's um, you know you've got your own etc etc and um, so the rest of it saying all the settings um, I've never really needed to use and you've obviously got the the home uh, home ones there your hyper memories but I've just never needed to use them, I just find it a lot easier uh, doing it there. Oh, and sorry, yeah, you've got the configuration as well tab there, and this is where you can set all your um, your options. Much easier than doing it in the memory because it can be a bit lengthy. 
and um, you can obviously set all your, uh, your your timeouts, your beeps, um, all the all the menu settings that are in the menu. You can actually do one here and just change it again in the uh, spreadsheet format. So it does make it incredibly easy to do. Um, I still think you should know how to do it on the radio itself because if you're just putting in one frequency or obviously you're doing something at the time, you need a bit of just you know put it in through the uh, the mic program in the radio if you need to change a, um, a repeater offset or a CTCSS code when someone changes it you know it doesn't take uh, it's easy to do it or quicker to do it on the radio maybe but as the way I've got myself right next to it and it's always plugged into this it is actually a lot easier some you know for me just to go on the software as soon as I open it it's got the preloaded uh, spreadsheet in from last time I used it like now and I can just add another one at the bottom or just change an offset or change a um, a chord or anything, press right to radio as you just saw, minute, done, and then uh, there you go. So absolutely cracking uh, bit of software to use. I haven't used any of the others for this radio, I'm not sure if there are any, many more to be honest, but um, doing it in this spreadsheet style with everything is uh, and having the banks set up like that so you can just scan through each bank and select each bank, so I, I find um, personally a hell of a lot easier. Um, and that's all I've needed to do really, I just switch my radio on, I just need to hold in the scan button and I can just select my bank um, and then either just go through it myself or just press scan until it comes up something and if it's quiet at night, a bit later on you can just put it to no bank and scan everything you've got programmed in so um, I find it much easier to be honest and if you're not sure of some of your settings, if you can't get into a repeater or you're not sure if you've got a, a code right or an offset right it's much easier to see it on the spreadsheet there where you can physically see what your offsets are and you know you can see if something's wrong and why it's not working rather than going through all the menus on here but that's just my opinion uh, I find it a lot easier so uh, that's it for now um, I do apologize I should have really done um, a video screen capture of me using the software really um, so I hope it doesn't turn out too terrible um, the actual look of the Spreadsheet, I don't think, as important. Just really seeing how easy it is to to uh, link the radio up and get it going. Um, I, I think that's much. It's easy to see. It's easy to do. And uh, if someone was put off by it, I hope this helps to show that it's um, it's not difficult at all. So I'll um, leave it at that. And if anyone's got any questions, please just ask, and uh, I'll try to uh, answer them to the best abilities. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.